Hi guys, welcome to Bobsy Bounds. Uh, I'm Bobs. And I'm Bouncer. Today we've got a very interesting podcast. As every week we've got an interesting podcast. So today we've got my brother on, my elder brother, uh, aka Joe. But the real name is Kurum Khan. How are you doing, mate? Say it properly, man. It's Khurum Khan. Khurum Khan. How are you, Joe? You okay? Apple Lotus. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, so basically, the we, we've got him for a couple of reasons, but the main reason we've got him on is it's like a, like an anniversary, mm. basically, right? So, uh, so you basically, was it 2020, wasn't it? Yeah, 2020. Yeah, 2020. You uh, caught COVID, mm-hmm. right? And a severe case of COVID. Now the thing is. And I, I'm, I'm going to come into this letter regarding like people saying to me, oh, you know, COVID isn't real, blah, 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 mm. whatever, yeah. You know what? I, I want everybody to uh, know and you, why don't you tell people your story. So what actually happened? Well, to your point, first of all, about COVID not being real. <clears throat> I was one of the people that were thinking that, you know, COVID is not real. And I remember a couple of people coming over and asking me, this is whilst we were still working in the office. Uh, that, oh, what, do you, what do you make of this whole COVID thing? And my response was, well, Ebola happened. What came about of that? Nothing ever happened. So I was one of them. But then obviously things got worse and worse. Lockdown happened. And then obviously dad got poorly as well. Uh, and then there was a lot of misinformation. Apparently 5G masks caused COVID. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Bullshit yeah. when that happened. So there was a lot of that stuff. You know, people are going to the hospital and they're never coming back home and all that stuff. So me... I fell very ill and it all started off from like literally a scratchy throat just a scratchy throat it started off with and then from there it just got progressively worse and worse and worse to the extent where I wasn't able to breathe properly fully and at its worst uh, I was coughing and blood was coming out and what basically happened you know in your lungs you have them tiny holes I forget what you call them now Uh, or bronchioles. Bron- 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, they were filled with tiny little blood clots. Mm. Now, if they were large blood clots, they could get rid of them. But because they were tiny little blood clots, and that's what you utilize to bring in oxygen into your body. And because that wasn't happening for me, they had to put me in a coma. So, so was, this was in the. Because uh, I know you got shifted to the ICU. Yeah. Right. So when? So did you straight go? Did you, did you go straight to the ICU? Yeah, I never went to the COVID ward. Um, so I went from home. So in the ambulance, I went straight to get a CAT scan done. Was it CAT scan? CT scan. A CT scan. Yeah. CAT scan. Uh, CT scan done. They checked it and they showed me the damage on my lungs, basically, and it was really, really bad. I mean, I don't know how to use. To, uh, read these things but they came and they explained it to me that it's um, <clears throat> that this here is what a normal lung is meant to look like this is what your looks like and on the normal scan is meant to be quite dark mine was really foggy that's how much infection was on my lungs uh, so instantly they said right you're not going to go to the covid ward they took me straight to the icu ward uh, straight away so that's where i went at that point did you know yeah because um I knew this, okay, but I won't show that you knew this. Mm. So as soon as they said that they've taken you to the to the ICU, mm. okay, at that time, 2020, when basically COVID was like at its peak, yeah, mm. whoever was going to the to the ICU, they weren't coming back out. Well, the thing is, like I said, I went in. There was a lot of misinformation back at that point, and not only us, the normal public, but the government didn't know much about this either. So, and there weren't any cases that were coming out that were still alive. I think one of mum and dad's neighbours, uh, I think she was in the COVID ward and she was on, not on the ventilator the way I was, but I think she's, she was on the nebulizer and all that stuff. Uh, but the going story was that once you're in hospital, that's a death sentence. Mm. Just stay away from hospitals. Uh, and I went to the hospital. I mean, because I wasn't getting enough oxygen into my body, I wasn't getting enough oxygen into my brain. So I was really, really confused. Dad had already passed away. Mm. And I think Colors is telling me that I'm sat at the end of the bed and I'm having a full-blown conversation with Dad. Mm. I'm really confused. Mm. Uh, so I've gone into hospital with all this confusion, with all this misinformation in my head. Yeah. And I was really, really panicky. Yeah. Uh, so I went with all that stuff. So I'll tell you at what point I thought, right, I'm not getting out of this. Um, so they, whilst I'm laying there in the ICU, they came to my room and they put this little cube in my room and it, they call it the Quran cube. Mm-hmm. And basically what that does, that just plays the lavat all mm-hmm. the time. 
Just uh, like um, obviously for people I don't know, it's, it's like the like the re re reciting the Quran. It's the recitation, loud recitation of the Quran. Yeah. And that's what it is. And the moment I heard that, I did, you, did, you, did you tell them that you're um, that you're a Yehud? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I heard. Okay, okay. So listen, you're a person of the book. We don't have Torah recitation. Right, okay, You'll yeah. have to deal with this. Yeah. But um, the moment they put that there, in that moment, I thought, right, this is it. Yeah. They're doing this because. <clears throat> this is the end of my life now mm. and so that's why they put that there because normally when we hear Talabat it's normally on a few different occasions mm. either when you go to the mosque mm. or when it's someone's funeral yeah. you know like uh, when uh, in the hearse yeah. like when they're playing it really loud, loud yeah. it sounded like that oh, right, yeah. so, and, and obviously I'm the, only like it's been scary though you know, well, you know, you know when they're playing it it is scary <laughs> it is no but literally because <laughs> the, only, the only time you hear that is that literally like when, when, when you're when you're like part of an entourage yeah, yeah. right and, and you're going to the graveyard or something yeah, or, yeah. Or, 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 or when the coffins come in to, to get the body to go to the yeah. uh, to the graveyard or something yeah. so that's what was being played yeah it was basically the love it was, it was the recitation yeah. a recitation of the Quran that's what it was but for me because we just had dad's funeral like a week and a half before that mm -hmm. that's what I equated that to that's what I related that to mm. so in my mind that's what was going through my head was right that's it and on, top of that, on top of that because your because your body your brain is not getting the uh, correct amount of oxygen mm. so that's confusing you even more as well exactly right yeah okay plus the, the misinformation yeah, plus the misinformation yeah, that people are going to the hospital, no one's coming back alive, yeah. and all that stuff. <coughs> and I remember just laying there, and you know, just like crying, thinking, you know what? If this is my time, and I was just saying my forgiveness, and I was just going through every person in my life, including you two idiots, all right, uh, and you as well, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> just apologizing if I've ever done anything to offend you, yeah. you know, Bob's, I'm sorry, Bouncer, I'm sorry, yeah. Mum, I'm sorry, Fizzy, I'm sorry. Colors, I'm sorry, Aaron. I'm sorry. I'm just apologizing to every single person yeah. I could think of in that moment. Yeah. Just asking for forgiveness. Just mm. kind of making my peace with the fact that that's it. I'm mm. done. Yeah. And it's a very lonely place to be in. Yeah. Because, yeah, you got doctors and all. Because normally when you go to the hospital, the per person that you're, you know, they'll greet you with a smile or something. Here, everyone was wearing that PPE stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it was. You couldn't see it was. If anything, idea. it was. It was a lot scarier yeah. that way. Um, no, because as humans, <coughs> you know, obviously we interact with, you know, language, yeah. Mm. But also we interact with like body movement yeah. and facial expression, yeah. If you can't see somebody's face, which at that time you couldn't, no, because you couldn't. I'm, I'm sure in the hospital they, they were like taking extra precautions, and yeah, so, yeah. so they were like yeah. fully like geared up, yeah. And so you got a doctor talking to you. You can't really gauge, you know, well, you, um, you know what their expression is or whatever. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like it's just like a mixture of everything, mm -hmm. right? Which then you know um, mentally, you know you you you, you break it down. We were wearing normal face masks. Yeah. The ones that are in hospital, they were wearing like these like old World War Two mm -hmm. gas yeah, masks yeah. type of things. The filters on the side. Yeah, yeah, filters on the side yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. They came out yeah. really yeah. far far like this. So in that delirious. Uh, m uh, state of mind you got these people coming right up close to you and doing stuff to you and all that mm. so it, it was really scary it was really scary so what what happened mm. next and after that so after the so i know you, you mentioned obviously they, they, they put you into a coma yes right? so my because my because of the blood clots on my lungs i wasn't pulling in enough oxygen so then they just they made the decision that because i'm not able to breathe for myself they need to uh, put me into heavy sedation Plus I was really panicky as well and then they decided to put me into a medically induced coma mm. and then stick a ventilator inside my lungs yeah. Yeah. for the ventilator to start doing the work for me mm. and I believe at one point it was at 100% capacity so that means my lungs weren't working at all yeah. clinically I was dead yeah for a couple of days I think <coughs> so basically yeah yeah so so your actual lungs could yeah. not do the job what, yeah. the, what, what your lungs are designed to do yeah yeah, so you had to have like obviously a machine to do the job for you. Yeah, and it was on hundred percent. And then at what point did they? Uh, was it a tracheostomy? Is that tracheostomy? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so I was in the coma for a week. Which is, by the way, if people don't know, is where they uh, cut a. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see a faint scar here now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they did uh, they make an incision over here. Yeah. Into your neck, and your trachea. They insert like a tube down there, and it's like a balloon. Okay. Uh, it kind of opens it up and then you're basically breathing through there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, presumably, obviously, like when you... Uh, 
So did that happen when you when you woke up or did that happen while you were under? So that was on my last day of when I was under. Okay. That was on my last day that they did that. Uh, and then once they'd done the operation, then they started bringing me around. Okay. Uh, they started bringing me back out of the coma. Okay, this is interesting now, yeah, because <coughs> obviously we'll... And then uh, what happened during the coma, Yeah. the kind of things that I saw and experienced, that's a whole nother... Okay, l- okay, well, well let, let's, let's go into that then. Into that. Okay. I was going to ask you, like, what, what did you experience while you were in the uh, coma? Like, yeah. Because, so. um, by the way, I've uh, obviously I've had this, this discussion with you before, mm. but I know there's a lot of people out there that probably, you know, like, they, 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 they won't know, right? Mm. And maybe because they've never spoken to somebody who's been put into an, a medically induced coma or any kind of a coma. Let me tell you one thing, Bobs. It's, like I said, it's a very lonely place to be. I mean that. How many people do you know that have been in a coma and have come out of it alive? Yeah, I know someone. Right? Well, you know me. <laughs> right. No, but, but, <laughs> yeah, but like, um, yeah, like like I said, so a lot of people don't know or they've never had a conversation with a person like you mm. who's been in that kind of situation. And like, is it like a dream or we don't know? So mm. go ahead. I mean, once again, like, you know, there's a lot of things that I saw and I witnessed. Uh, and I've spoken to one person who... Um, one of your friends' dad's actually a bouncer, who years and years ago got attacked. Uh, I can't remember. Junaid's dad got attacked years and years ago, and they had to put him into a uh, into a medically induced coma. Mm-hmm. And he had a very similar experience mm-hmm. of visuals that I saw. Yeah. And that was I'll come to what I saw, which was same as his in a moment. But basically, um, the main part of it was for a lot of it, I was with dad. And we were just walking, mm. and we were just having a chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly what the topic was we were talking about. I remember fragments here and there. It's been three years now. Every day I try to remember a little bit of it because just simply I don't want to forget about it. But the whole time we were together, there was this one guy that was with us the whole time, mm-hmm. dressed in just like in a black suit type of a thing, and he was almost like a guide. And we were just walking and we were following this guy. Yeah. Sometimes this guy would talk to me. Sometimes he talked to dad. Sometimes he'd be behind us. Could you see this person's face? Just uh, I can't remember his exact features. Right. Okay. Okay. But I remember he was just like this, this figure that was there that was guiding you. That was guiding us through through this. um, And the weird thing is, you like they say that your life flashes before your eyes. Yeah. It's like I was revisiting key moments of my life, but I was able to like see myself. So, for example, like, like I was able to see myself on the day that Aaron was born mm. in the hospital. Aaron, obviously, by the way, being your son. That's my eldest son, yeah. yeah. My nephew. Um, so, but as a third person, I'm able to see myself there. Like, you know, so certain points of my life, I'm able to see myself. Um, and then there was, and that was the nice stuff that was going on. And then every now and again, like I'm walking with dad and I'll get pulled out of there and I get thrown into like a really horrible scenario where like I'm like these doctors are all around me and they're trying to like do these weird experiments on me and stuff like that and I'm calling out saying no 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 I, I shouldn't be here I really shouldn't be here uh, but you know and they're doing all this weird stuff like with like buzz saws and mm-hmm. chainsaws and stuff like that and it was really really horrifying but just as about something bad is about to happen yeah. I get taken back to that again mm-hmm. and we're just walking and we're just chatting and stuff. Eventually, we get to a certain point of mine and dad's journey. And it's like almost like a smoke screen type of a thing. And dad just looks over to me and he just says in Urdu, Chalo par main Which is him saying, all right, well, I'll, uh, I'll head off now. Mm. And I remember s- saying to dad, oh, so dad, am I going in there with you as well? And dad said, no, no, what are you going to do here? You go back to your kids. Mm-hmm. And that's it, he went. He went. After that, what happened was me and that guy, he stayed with me. Mm-hmm. And what can only be described as like a, almost like an elevator type of a thing. We just kind of went into this thing and we just started going upwards, mm-hmm. upwards, upwards, upwards. And we're talking and, <coughs> just, and he's talking to me about my kids. He's talking to me about my wife. He's talking to me about my family. He's talking to me about certain choices I've made in my life Mm -hmm. and how I can be better. Uh, And we've gone 
really, really, really high with one outside of the earth. And it sounds really like, oh, you're making this up and stuff like that, but I saw what I saw. Yeah. I don't think, I, 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 I don't think at all. Because I think, um, obviously, sorry to interrupt what you're saying, but the thing is, I know people, uh, and I've seen a lot of people who have had like these psychedelic, um, you know, experiences yeah. through certain drugs, uh, you know, whether it be mushrooms, whether it be uh, DMT, um, you know, there's, um, what's your, ayahuasca, there, there's a lot of stuff. LSD and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they've basically, you know, had experiences like this. What's to say that the mental state that you were in at the time, all the trauma that you were going through, all the treatment you were going mm. through, all the drugs that you were on, mm. then obviously caused this kind of an effect mm. um i i don't know you know what drugs they had you on yeah. i don't even think you know really what drugs no, 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 yeah no. but who knows that those are some of the effects that these drugs mm. can have they can send you into you know like a, like a kind of a wormhole mm. which can you know uh give you this 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 kind of an expansion can, um, on astral projection yeah astral projection yeah. Or, or or it can give you this kind of a like uh like you know basically it, 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 it sends you onto a journey the mm. way the way these other uh psychedelic drugs do mm -hmm. but anyway sorry carry on so you you went like basically out of this world kind of yeah thing. literally out of this world yeah and we've got to a certain point and it was just darkness all around and it was very very <laughs> and it was very very calm yeah very calm and there was this shape in the distance which kept moving and sh changing and i asked this guy what's that and he just looked at me and he said that is all of creation. That is everything we are. And I looked at him and asked, and I asked him, who are you? And he just said, you know who I am. I've always been with you. Okay. And I don't know what... Uh, what do you think you meant by that? Well, I just... It's weird because in the moment, I knew exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. and, what do you, so what, who do you and, think he was? And... and I don't know if it was a manis man, like manifestation of God, or was it an angel, or maybe it was the angel of death. I, I, and, I, and, and, and I'll tell you why I say that. Because in that moment, I don't know why, I started reading the Rabbi Jalni Ki Dua, okay. which is a dua that you read for your parents. Yeah, okay. And at the end of it, in uh, in namaz, at least when you finish it by saying, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah, and I, like, I was hugging <coughs> him, he hugged me, and I started reading this dua. Yeah. And when I got to the end and I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, he said, Wa alaikum salam to me. Okay. And I just kind of looked at him. And like I said, in that moment, I knew exactly who this is. Yeah. And for the life of me, I can't remember yeah. who I thought this but it was. But it wasn't a figure which who was like uh, there to cause you any kind of no. like a distress. Not at all, not so, at all. So you felt like... Uh, more of a presenter, like a guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You felt like comfortable with it. Right? Very comfortable. And when we were in that final place, mm -hmm. what I felt in that moment was if I stay here for the rest of my life, I have no issues. Yeah. I'll just stay here. Mm -hmm. And then he said to me, he goes, I'm going to send you back now. And until you can see me, you can ask me any question and I'll answer it for you. And it's a bit of a controversial one this is, maybe because I'm a Muslim. And this is, you know, but this is these are the questions that i asked him as i'm going back i can see everything kind of coming back around me yeah. and him as a figure he's getting smaller and smaller and i asked him uh uh what is god's message mm -hmm. and he said god's message is the same as what it as what it always has been mm -hmm. love and asked him is islam the one true religion and he said the same thing god's message is the same as what it always has been mm. love okay make of that what you will mm. i don't know yeah no the thing is look at the end of the day you know um it's something that you obviously mm. witnessed it's something that you went through um and who am i to question that Mm. Right, you know, I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm nobody to question that. I didn't go through all of that, mm. and I mean, the way I look at it, there's no reason for you to lie about any of this stuff anyway, mm. right? Obviously, it's, it's something that you went through, and it's, it's, and it's a big thing for you to share this. Mm. It's a very personal thing, yeah, because I think there's a lot of people going to be watching, okay, and it's a very personal thing. Um, I was actually on, um, kind of, I was on the fence about even, yeah. even saying that you know, shouldn't even go into all of this yeah. stuff, right? So, for you to go into it, it's uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I've shared it.
the reason I've shared it is because I remember, you know, when I came out of the coma, I really wanted to have a conversation with other people because I was the first one, uh, first person in Bradford, at least, I think in the UK, in fact, that not only went into ICU, but uh, uh, but managed to come out of the coma and be discharged from the ICU. And it, this is, by the way, very well documented. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you were to, t yeah, if you were to type uh, yeah. your name into the TNA, mm. you can see video clips and everything of, of you literally being wheeled out, yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with yeah. a big beard and big hair and everything. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, Look North came, they did an interview as well. So it has been really well documented so yeah so so, so yeah. you did this basically all for 50 minutes of fame oh, hell yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you did it on purpose i mean there's b easier ways to be famous <coughs> <laughs> so that is easy ways to be famous yeah. but yeah you, you uh, took long way, you took a long I way took around a long route. Yeah, I yeah i took a different route to everyone else mm. uh but um um so basically when i came out i really wanted to i don't know like and I did inquire about this, whether there's a support group of some kind, because like I said, it's a very lonely place to be. This is because there's not very many people that have been through what I've been through and come out alive on the other end. Have you actually spoken to like a psychiatrist or something like that? About yeah, this? yeah, I went through therapy. Yeah. Uh, but that was me. Is there some of the NHS sent you one? Yes, or? it was. Yeah, I mean, and I have to say, honestly, the amount of support that I got yeah. from them was absolutely unbelievable. You know, uh, physiotherapy, even now as well, because I've officially got long COVID now. So that's like cardio is out of the equation for me. Yeah. I can't do that, uh, you know, because my lung capacity is gone tremendously better from what it was. Mm. So when I came out, I wanted to be part of some kind of a support group or something, because there's not many people that have, that at least I don't personally know anyone mm. that's been through what I've been through and come out alive on the other end. So the NHS, they actually sent you to a psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, but that was mainly because obviously I've been through a traumatic experience. And I was suffering with PTSD. Mm -hmm. Like when I came out, came back home, I was having difficulty going to sleep. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep. Um, so I'd stay awake the entire night. Eventually I'd be able to go to sleep for about eight in the morning mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, which was all right, because I was off work and obviously I had, uh, you know, everyone was home because it was peak lockdown at the time. So that was all right, but I was suffering with it a lot of the time. Uh, and even after that as well they've helped me out a lot with physiotherapist appointments mm -hmm. there was some there was a lady that used to come to uh come to my house and just check up on my progress because at the time i remember because i was still coming around from a lot of things mm -hmm. i was dealing with a lot uh, my information processing took a massive hit as well so yeah. i wasn't able to drive for about the first six months or so uh so a lot there was a lot of support that i got and even after that as well i was part of the long covid clinic which I've been diagnosed with lung COVID, so cardio is out of the equation, mm -hmm. uh, which my lungs obviously are far sight better than what they are now, mm -hmm. uh, than what they were back then, sorry, but at the po that point there were 0%, obviously there was no capacity in the Absolutely, lungs, yeah. and then now I think I'm operating at around about 80%, which a normal healthy lung is anywhere between, I think they say 95 to 110%, mm -hmm. 110% is like your athletes, mm -hmm. basically. And I'm at around 80%. So I'm just thankful for that. Yeah. I'm just thankful for that. But no, uh, uh, they were going to set up some kind of a support group. Because although I was the first person to come out of the coma and be discharged from ICU. Because I never saw the inside of the COVID ward. I got admitted directly into the ICU. And then that's where I got discharged from. Mm -hmm. um, so they were meant to set something up. Because there were others after me that were in a coma as well. And they came out of it. And they were meant to set up some kind of a support group for us all to meet up like once a month or something just to have a chat with each other but that never materialized yeah so like uh so when you were like having difficulty sleeping mm. could you visualize what you saw or was it like uh just like you know flashbacks of i was back at the hospital yeah yeah it, yeah because i remember because they had literally pipes and wires and all sorts and near enough every single part of my body yeah. and I had to sleep in a certain way, had my hands in a certain way, mm -hmm. just so that then like I don't lay them flat down yeah. uh, and I'm not on the, what do they call them, uh, catheters? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not on the catheter like that. So I had to kind of sleep like this. And for the first couple of months, that's how I'd sleep. I'd sleep on my back. And normally I don't sleep on my back. I'd mm -hmm. sleep on my side, left or right. Yeah. But I kind of got used to, because I was in hospital in total for three weeks. So one yeah. week where they were trying to fix me, one week of coma and then one week of recovery afterwards mm. so um three weeks and i'd kind of got used to 
sleeping in a certain way so that took about a good month month and a half for me to break out of that uh, but yeah m at night time when I couldn't sleep it was just all that going through my head mm -hmm. I'm back at the hospital because whenever I'd fall asleep a little bit yeah. it's like I'm back at the hospital again hospital, yeah. and that was PTSD, PTSD yeah. that's textbook PTSD and that's why I went through therapy for that exact purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what about now then so do, would you say that now you're like I mean <clears throat> as close as you can be to fully recovered yeah I mean physically I'll be honest it's taken its <coughs> toll yeah and it's not a small thing that I went through and it's changed like a lot of habits within me there's mm. certain things I can't do would you say would you say would you say your mentality has changed as well would you say In that you take sense. would you say would you say that you take less things for granted you know me very well yeah and I don't take very many things very seriously uh, but I think this has definitely <coughs> had a massive the thing is I can't go through what I got what, what, what I went through and not allow it to change me mm. even if it's not even if it's a little bit and I think I've probably turned more towards my religion yeah I think that's one of the big things that's happened mm. uh, because you know someone up there is clearly looking out for me mm. yeah don't be don't get me wrong I was able to joke about this well before all of you guys were able to joke about it mm. I remember in fact you were alright with it but I know a lot of family members they weren't ready to joke about this yet yeah. and me I've got a very yeah. inappropriate sense of humor yeah. I was able to joke about it whilst I was sat in the hospital yeah. to be fair uh, but I know like with Fizzy and mom and everyone it, it, it took him a little while to get around to it I'm, I'm a bit in that sense isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, listen right, I, I heard about the <laughs> no, no, I, I, I turned everything into a joke <laughs> Listen, have you heard the prank he was going to pull on me? No and he, Have you told him about the prank, about the grey hair and all that stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I remember this, what was I going to do? <laughs> you got grey hair now <laughs> No, 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 right, so what he was going to do, right? I was going to do No, what he was going to do, right, so he was going to get him and Fizzy to like uh, Fizzy's our, uh, my eldest brother Our eldest brother uh, So if they were, were going to dye their hair or spray their hair grey yeah. yeah. And they were going to get some, hire some guy yeah. That looks a little like Aaron, my eldest son yeah. And come over to me and say like, uh, Joe, you've been in a coma for 15 years yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> He's your grandchild yeah. And I'm going to be like, how oh, do you Joe, you alright? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, you get like, you know, the, the purple like grey spray yeah. Yeah. Joe, you've been in hospital, and like, you've been in a coma It's good to see you, you know, <laughs> this and that uh, and uh, that, I, I was actually like, right. yeah. in the moment, I'm because like, I was really emotional when I came out of the coma. I wouldn't have appreciated it, but I'll tell you what. Later on, I would have seen a funny side to it. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Should have done it, man. <laughs> <laughs> it <would've laughs> Can you imagine the number of views you would have got? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's a video of uh, some guy. Um, he was in the hospital for like I think it was like a day or something. Yeah. And they pranked him uh, with the son. That you got. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen that one. No. When no, he brought his son that. over, and it's like uh, yeah. some random kid. He's like, oh, "This is your son." He's about ten years old, ten years old, okay. and uh, his mates all like dressed up in like like uh, white yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah, white, yeah, and right, yeah. everything. And uh, he's like, "You've been going for ten years." <laughs> 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 he got confused. He's like, "What really?" <laughs> it, like literally, it took him about five minutes to like actually realize it's a joke. Yeah, and then they all came out and they were just it was just hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, it's, it's good to like, you know, see that, you know, you're, you're back on your two feet now. Everything's pretty much as normal as it can be. Yeah, yeah Alhamdulillah. You know what it is? I'll be honest with you. And, you know, there's been good things that have come out of the lockdown as well. For me personally, the one of the best things that's come out of lockdown is being able to work from home. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Honestly, it gives me so much. Because normally, because I, I work in Leeds and I'd have to wake up about two hours before I need to start. And then you've got an hour of just sitting in traffic both ways. Mm. Now I just I've got the setup in my bedroom. You know I will roll out of bed and log on. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to worry about any, any traffic or anything like that. The moment I finish my day, working day literally finishes there. I don't have to worry about finishing and then sitting in traffic for an hour, hour and a half afterwards either. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that is. I, th I think a lot of people it's been, it's been quite convenient for yeah. them. Um, obviously, you know the bad side to it is the fact that a lot of people passed away and everything. Yeah, but the whole country changed. The whole, the whole dynamic changed. The whole world changed. Yeah, yeah, the whole world changed. The impact, changed. Uh, everything. And it's strange because, like, now we go out and we see kind of th th these relics of that time on the floor, two meters apart. Yeah, two you see, apart, you know, which that's not the rule anymore, but it's really odd that is to see yeah. that now. Uh, th th and it is almost like an ancient artifact. I think you should keep that rule two, two meters apart. I'll be honest, I like so much about uh, lockdown. I like it. There was more order. Yeah. There yeah. was a lot more order. It was like, it was like living in a communist country. Mm. And we had a discussion about this. Uh, Wouldn't that be such a bad thing? 
I don't know. Like, look, the, the thing is, right, I mean, we're, we're going to go into, like, a, a bit of a different conversation now, but, like, um, uh, that communism and, obviously, capitalism, right? Do we live in a capitalist country, yeah. so to speak, right? Yeah. The thing is, I don't know, man, I think there's certain aspects of communism which I think I, I kind of do agree with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they say the difference between communism and capitalism is basically in a, in a communist country, you wait in line for bread. Yeah. Whereas in a capitalist country, the bread waits in line for you. Hmm. Like I can go into Morrison's right now, and there's a different variety of different kind yeah. of bread, whole grain, flipping this, this, that, half and half, all sorts, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas in a communist country, you have to wait in line and wait for your turn, and then if when you get to the front of the line, the bread's run out. Sorry, mate, go yeah. chip home, do one, right? You're hungry today. No, but that you're looking at like an extreme example. Over yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about North Korea. Yeah, here. yeah, you know, you're looking at an extreme, extreme example over here, and I think you know, in 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 the world that we live in now. Yeah. I think we could probably benefit from being more towards communism simply because there'll be a lot more fairness. Okay, go on. G- g- give me an example of uh, something that they do in a communist country which which we should implement in this country and this country is going to benefit. Or the public, general public is going to benefit. I'll be honest. I'm the wrong person to speak to about this. I know obviously Aaron's the best person to speak right, to, yeah. Right. You that's need, a, that's to, speak my nephew, to, you need yeah. to speak to Aaron about yeah, this. Yeah. Honestly, the level of knowledge that child <coughs> has about this sort of stuff is just finished reading the Communist Manifesto, yeah. uh, uh, which was the book written by Karl Marx, mm. the father of communism, Marxism, yeah. basically. Uh, and there's other books that he's also reading, but I don't want to mention them on a podcast. Because he might get into a lot of trouble. Uh, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but he's, 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 he's got his own political inclinations and he tells me quite often, uh, and he is quite... Uh, heavy towards the socialism communist side yeah basically and I believe the reason for that is from what my understanding is is because it's a very fair and just system you know where over here so for example like in um, like over here with the politicians for example they get away with a hell of a lot of stuff yeah but during a communist regime call it or communist society that wouldn't happen because near enough everyone would be equal. Yeah. Whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a toilet cleaner, mm. everyone would be equal. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not saying even for a second that in a communist country, right, the politicians aren't corrupt. Yeah. I think corruption is everywhere, basically, right? I just yeah, yeah. think that, you know, um, there's, there's, there's more sanctions in place. Yeah. And there's more... Um, that if you get caught, right, the, 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 the guidelines and rules are more strict. Mm-hmm. When it comes to a, a communist regime in comparison to obviously a capitalist, right? And you know what else annoys me as well, okay? Is um, when people say to me that this country, England, is a Christian country. It's not a Christian it's country. Not. It's not, man. It's not. It, this country is basically a secular. Yeah. Right? Look, right. Our head of state, King Charles, yeah. he's the head of the Church of England, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. COV, yeah. But the whole purpose behind having our parliamentary government. Is so that we can separate uh, church and state. Yeah, that's the whole purpose behind it, you know. And it's very nice, you know. We had the Queen for like how many of the years she reigned for all our lives, yeah. and now it's King Charles. But he doesn't really have any actual power. No, but the thing is, though. No, no, but the, no. But the thing is, this is the thing, right? I, personally, this is my personal opinion, right? Mm. I think there is, for, like a country like England, there's no need for a monarchy. No, there isn't. Right? There is literally no need for a monarchy. Mm. Like the UAE, <coughs> excuse me, like UAE, uh, Qatar, and like these countries, right? You know, like uh, the royal family means a lot because yeah. they have a massive influence on the government, mm. right? The royal family in this country literally has no influence whatsoever. They can if they want to. Yeah. They can if they want to, but they want everybody to like them. So that's why they, they don't basically stick their leg into the um, into the political yeah, side can of. I'll be uh, honest with you. You know, with all the shit that's going on at the moment, with Prince Harry, they can't run their own fucking house. Yeah. Probably right. Let alone run the bloody country, right? So I think. And especially with Meghan being a robot. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, I heard one of the best lines about that entire fiasco from Chris Rock's uh, comedy special. Did you watch it? This no, no, I didn't watch it. I mean, I watched it. He goes into a lot of depth about the whole Will Smith slap and all that stuff. Oh, and yeah. what he said... You oh, know, I've, seen, I've seen parts yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. So we, he goes, that you know, the whole thing with uh, Megan and she went on Oprah and the talk and she's saying, you know, oh, how everyone was wondering how dark the child's going to be. You know, and he, and, and he goes, let's be honest, we were all wondering that. <laughs> but he goes, what happened with her wasn't some racist shit. 
that was just some in-laws shit. Yeah, yeah, it was. Which yeah. is very true, and I think that sums it up perfectly. Mm. Basically, you're getting married to an outside woman who your family don't approve of. Yeah. She's been divorced in the past. She comes from, okay, and I think somewhere along the line, race must have come into it, surely, yeah. right? But I don't think it was as prominently featured in these conversations mm. as Harry and Meghan make it out. She to basically me. just so basically. She already just said it, didn't she? No, so basically, what's Pretty happening? Surprised. What was what's happened to her is basically, I'm gonna get married to a goodie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You, you, you're gonna basically go through the same shit. You are. So yeah, you know, then it does. But but the thing is, obviously, this the got highlighted in the, in the press and media. A because the media, the, they've run out of ideas. Yeah, they have. Right. <coughs> you know, and they need something to post about. Plus, these lot, they're like, you know, it's just, it's like a, uh, the the indie, you know, it's like um, celebrities, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. 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 Uh, people like to see drama. Yeah. People people yeah. like to see yeah. drama. People like to see like you know people what's going. Drama, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Listen, I I think rather than po uh, having a. Uh, having it in the media, they should have David Attenborough because let's face it, they're all lizards, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the queen, queen, the, queen, the, queen the, Liz. Yeah, she's a, lizards. she's apparently a lizard. But um, speaking of conspiracy theories, though, I'll tell you God. one thing. I, but, but, and I have this genuine theory that you know, whenever there's something like this that happens, uh, like the whole thing going on with the royal family and all that stuff, whenever some big news like this comes out. I reckon it happens to take your concentration away from what's actually going on in the background. I've said this for ages. Right. I've said yeah. this for ages. I reckon they do yeah. it just to distract us. Yeah, and in that moment, yeah. we're like a cat who's been distracted by a laser pointer. Mm. Yeah. We'll all go. We'll all gravitate towards that. Yeah. But what's actually happening in the background, we're not aware of. Yeah, I mean the thing is, everybody knows, right? That obviously, you know, uh, the news. It, it, you know it's there and it, it, it manipulates people's mm. thoughts minds um, and this is what I don't like about the news right you know the news should have a very unbiased uh, look the, if you're watching the news yeah the news's job is to tell you the news yeah it's not the it's not the news anchor or the news companies or the reporters job to give you an opinion mm -hmm. no, no. that's my honest that's my opinion right it is your job to present us with the news current affairs what's going on this person died that person happened this thing happened that thing happened that happened mm. but then when you start to then put like um an opinion behind it okay then people start to follow that opinion they do and that and, and that i find a bit very misleading it's not factual then, then it's, it's not opinion. factual yeah no because because now you've got this big massive platform i don't want to mention the name of of any kind of a platform but they're mm. all out there i mean i could mention all the bbc you've got itv news you've mm. got the cnn and all this stuff right nbc and all that mm. right your job is to present us with the news yeah, yeah. don't present us with your opinion mm. yeah. as soon as you start presenting us with your opinion the thing is this is let me say something right there's something funny so you know there's that movie called the lego movie yeah yeah and it's really funny in that because you know in the end of the movie uh, the main character in the, in, in, in the movie the girl right she she comes on this massive teleprompter yeah. and she goes hi guys you don't know who I am but I'm on the TV so clearly you know that I'm telling you the truth yeah <laughs> yeah right um, you, you know yeah, that's, no, like, that, that's like a kids movie yeah there's a lot of movies and media that have already portrayed something like this there's an Indian movie called Run I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Amitabh Bachchan. Amitabh Bachchan in yeah. it. That movie is all about how news channels, they manipulate news and how they manipulate certain things. They'll cut a scene from over here and they'll splice it over there and they'll basically put it together and they'll make it completely in, in the opposite context to what it was meant. Uh, so much so that they managed to uh, uh, topple an entire government yeah. on the basis yeah. of one clip of the Prime Minister in the movie. Uh, so it, it is. It is really fascinating when when you think about it, and I suppose, <coughs> and it's difficult to get people to. I also think you know the media has too much power in this country right, as well, mm -hmm. because they have the power to make or break you, right? Yeah. For example, I'll give an example, right? Let's say tomorrow, for example, uh, on the BBC, if they did an interview with me, and Bouncer, right, and they said that oh, there's a new. Um, channel okay on youtube is called bobsy bounce they do podcasts and they get interesting people on they're very engaging blah 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 please guys go check them out you know thank you for coming on to our on to our channel you know on this morning love to have you on it was fantastic boom right the views are gonna shoot up hmm. on the same thing right if there's a news report that says today news there's a new channel called bobsy bounce and their views are very controversial blah 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 this is that and whatever that's yeah what they do exactly right but i'll tell you one thing and you know and, and i'm just saying how they can make or break you think about 20 years ago we've actually lived through this guys when 9 11 happened yeah when that happened 
about you, you know and the whole islamophobia thing came in yeah, yeah. everything you saw was extremist muslims yeah. that's all we saw it's, it's been taken over by something now cool. um and i was discussing this with aiden earlier so <laughs> everybody's attention has gone off the extreme extremist muslim onto the extremist vegan or, or the wokeness stuff uh, yeah but, but but more so i think i think now vegans have been pushing on, on, on under the bus now right um have you spoken to a vegan yeah, yeah I spoke, uh, i've spoken to vegan i've spoken to vegans okay i've spoken to three kind of vegans yeah mm. i've spoken to vegans who basically have been vegans before the vegan hype yeah and who basically do it because they are either they, they just can't uh uh you know yeah. the, the, the body just can't process meat, yeah, yeah right because of medical reasons yeah they're not doing it for any kind of a yeah. they're not doing it because you know uh, of they're, uh, they're not doing it to be activists yeah yeah, yeah they're not doing it to be, yeah, to be an activist yeah. and they're not doing it because like you know the they're, they're, they're bothered about causing harm to uh, an animal right mm. then you got the other vegans who basically do it because of carbon footprint reasons mm. but then i've spoke to a militant vegans as well mm. Oh, they are dangerous ones. They are dangerous. Yeah. There were a time, uh, was, it, was it last year, when they were um, lining up on the roads and uh, people were knocking them over and stuff. Well, <laughs> yeah. That was a vegan, wasn't that? Uh, that, that was in, vegan in, well, in, the, in uh, environmentalists. That was environmentalists as well. Environmentalists as well. Were they? Yeah, vegans were yeah, they, vegans yeah they were just laying down on the motorway, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. On the motorway, and yeah. a guy grabbed him and chucked <laughs> him off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. chucked him, yeah, yeah. Chucked him uh, out of the way. Yeah, so they were doing like a lot of. Uh, uh, when protests, protests with the environmental, you know, that was that as well. Yeah. That was a recent. I, I, I know, no, 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 I know, I know the environmentalists at the moment. They're getting like a paint and they're chucking them on like a Porsche, Porsche. Uh, showrooms. Showroom, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah, Martin yeah, showroom. Yeah, showroom. They're chucking it. Yeah. There's one guy who's wearing like a dress. Look. So that guy, he's basically, he's basically like a like a two spirit. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a helicopter. No, no, it's, it's not. No, I think you, you were saying it. It's like a two-spirit. Uh, Penguin or something. No, no, um, oh, no pansexual, oh. uh, something, a vegan activist, environmentalist activist. You know, um, uh, I forget who said this, some. I, I saw this clip somewhere, and the guy was saying, he goes, you know, when you die, and years and years and years down the line, yeah. once you've been fossilized, and they dig up your bones, and if you know they're gonna be able to identify whether looking at your dna in your bones whether you were a male or whether you're a female yeah. and that's it that's yeah it. no but i think you know you know you know this because uh, thing is i don't i don't want to like kind of you know uh offend anyone yeah but i will say this like i think it's more of a state of mind for these people mm -hmm. i think i think even these guys deep inside they know that either you're a you, you know you're born a man or a woman of okay course do. right if, if you you know let, 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 let's look at it uh, scientifically right and science doesn't lie okay mm. if something's a fact it's a fact either you are born a man or a woman or you're born is it an uh Hama uh, Hama 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 yeah which yeah. you could be both right yeah. but then they say oh what about them well that it doesn't happen often oh. I'm, I, I, I'm i'm talking about you know the, the 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 majority okay yeah it's either man or a woman yeah okay and like what you said when you die you get fossilized whatever you know how you're going to be identified mm. But I think you know the sexuality thing and all that is basically is is you know it's it's, it's a mindset, isn't it? It is a mindset, yeah. and 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 it is a very controversial opinion that is. And look, this is the way I look at it, right? Do whatever the hell you want. Just don't. This you know, you <coughs> do you. That's fine. I don't care. But I, I, I don't but, understand but, why you can be like a, a trans woman and be a lesbian at the same time. I don't understand that. Yeah. Look, yeah. He, look, <laughs> look there was look, a thing, wasn't there, recent in, in Scotland, if you remember, where that guy, the uh, guy that was the harassing women, mm. uh, I think it was like sexually harassing women, and then he he got imprisoned. But just before he got imprisoned, he decided to come out as that I identify as a woman. Oh, so they got so to they sent him to a woman's prison. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, then. I think his ex came out and said, "No, no, he's lying. Mm. He's full of shit." <laughs> so that they basically sent him back to the men's prison. And also, the, uh, you know, recently they're putting um, trans uh, into uh, bodybuilding as well. As oh yeah, yeah. yeah the, there's that guy who's the there's that guy that's smashing all the records. What's that yeah, 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 Sumer. No, no, is 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 a bodybuilder, is a powerlifter. Powerlifter, yeah. Is a guy, so he's basically doing proper shit yeah. as, as as a man, yeah. right? Because he's not strong enough. Yeah. But oh. unfortunately, listen. At the end of the day, biology is biology, man. And the guy is obviously stronger than him, yeah. than 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 the strongest women. And and now he's competing as a woman. Yeah. Is he an Australian? I think. I think he's a, I or is it Canadian? 
Oh, I, I don't know, yeah. See, when stuff like this happens, but this, that's but what spurs on. No, but this guy's smashing all the records. Yeah, yeah. The, the women records. And no, but I think it's been outlawed now, wasn't it? Like, you're not allowed to do that. I no, think. they're doing no, it. No, 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 no. I, re- I think I read somewhere, or I think it's either us or some other country has banned that from happening now. I don't know. I've actually had debates with with women, yeah, and I've said that you know. Um, like you know, so 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 if a man identifies as a woman, can he then he who's now a she or they, can they go and then have um, a, you know, like a boxing match? Yeah. Right. They're like yeah, and and some of these women they're like yeah, what's wrong with that? I'm like listen, right. So today, let me I'm, not, I'm like listen, hang on a second. I'm, I'm, so today, if Mike Tyson decides to come out of retirement, I know him and, uh, yeah, and identifies uh, as and identify as a woman, you telling me he's gonna be able to go into a ring? And even at this stage where he's retired, that guy can still pack a punch. <coughs> Let's be honest, right? Yeah. If he decides to unretire and start identifying as a female, you're telling me he'll be able to step into um, the um, ring. Um, by, um, by the way, nowadays you don't even have to actually uh, become like. Um, there's no trans. Uh, uh, yeah, you, 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 yeah, yeah. No to transition. transition. All you got to say is, say. yeah, you say I identify as a woman. I believe I'm a woman, yeah. right? And I want to compete in women's sports. Yeah. Okay, people can't discriminate against that. No, they can't. Okay, okay, that's fine, right? Go on, get in the octagon with Khabib. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a person there. Called Jesse Cooper. There was a full like a court case. Okay. Well, I'm 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 gonna put up a picture of that person over there. Then yeah. yeah. So, so send me that later. <laughs> so you know, like you think of that. So you got. You, let's say you got Khabib. Now. Okay. You know what? Get any UFC fighter. Any UFC fighter. Right. Conor who, McGregor. Yeah, who isn't even yeah. that, that that hard. I'm sorry, but you know you, you can't cheat we're science. They were physically different. Mm. <coughs> Look, men um men are good in what 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 they do, okay? Like hunters, gatherers and you know, basically, mm. right? And women they have more of a nurturing thing. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry, but but I don't mean it, 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 it's a generalization. But you're right in what yeah. you're saying. No, it is a generalization, right? Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of women that can no, th- th- that can grab me and <laughs> throw me in yeah, the air, yeah. right? But I'm just talking about in general. You know, over time, society. Mm. Um, if you want to bring science and evolution into it, yeah. bring it into it. Right? You know what I mean? And it's always been the man was like the hunter, and the woman was basically like the nur- you know the nurturing mm. part. I'm not saying any job is easier or harder than the other, mm. right? Raising a family, lots of kids, is is very very difficult to it's do. Very difficult, right? A baby, if you leave it, it'll die. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. at the end of the day, humans are so pathetic when the babies, yeah. right? Compared to like a giraffe yeah. that yeah. comes out starts walking. Yeah, right. You know, or you got a gazelle that gets up and starts running, and they got yeah. a cheetah running after it, yeah. Yeah. and it's literally yeah. what, uh, literally like a six months old. What's the baby like when they're six, when they're six months old? No, sorry, six months, they're fully grown. Yeah. I'm talking about six hour old. I swear to God, I, th- I think about stuff like this and I think, you know, it's like <laughs> alpha species, my ass, man. What the fuck? This is what we've done with it. You know, we've built all these great things. You look at human history. Where are we right now? <laughs> the two-spirited penguin is some shit, is it? Yeah. yeah. You know, but you know something, actually, <laughs> this is where we're at. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's another thing as well. You know, like you said the oldest thing that we built, right? There's, this is a bit of a different conversation I want to go on to, right? We're not going to have a, a podcast for now, but like um, I think in terms of building stuff as well, I think we're very lazy. Mm. <coughs> Let me tell you why, yeah? You know, back in the days, you know, when we built stuff, we had p- people had a vision, okay? Um, what's that place? This is Notre Dame, okay? Do you know how long that took to build? Mm. How long did it take in Notre Dame? Did it take about, about 100 years to build or something? Oh, the cathedral. The, the cathedral, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Notre Dame, right, the one in, uh, is it in France, isn't it? Yeah? France, yeah, yeah, burnt down. The one that got burnt and yeah. they're, they're, they're restoring it now. Yeah. How long? 200 years. It took 200 years to build. 1163 to 30. Look at that, right? Uh, and and yeah. who, who was the architect of that? Um, who was the architect of, of, of Notre Dame? Uh, anyway, we'll, 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 uh, we'll come to the architect, he'll tell us, right? And he'll tell us, he had a vision. Check this out, about. So he had a vision that I'm going to build something and it's going to take me 200 years to build it. Yeah. Which means that I'm going to be dead. Yeah, by the time. Right? Yeah. But yeah. And he was probably about 50 by the time. Possibly. That, yeah, yeah, that he started. Yeah, so, so, it's, so it's very highly likely that that building was probably fully, like, you know, erected by the time that his grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grandkids, now grandkids now it's like build now, finish now, six months, it needs mm-hmm. to be done. That's the, the, that's the reason why you got buildings rather. Right? The fucking the crumble, but that 
you've come full circle there that's the problem with having a capitalist country yeah yeah is because everything is to do with the almighty book. yeah but there's no vision though there's no vision because yeah. you want a quick book you want to make a quick quick quid basically yeah. mm. is what you want to do get things out immediately yeah otherwise you're going to lose money i mean look at the pyramids right yeah. <coughs> the pyramids we can have a conversation about this flipping out for three hours alone yeah. Uh, the the amount of podcasts that I've seen, the amount of conversations I've seen about the pyramids and you know the mystery behind the pyramids, right? Once again, the pyramids took years and years and years mm. to build. Actually, I don't even know, man, because the, 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 yeah. who who knows how these pyramids were built, man? Yeah, because if you have you seen the original, what they look like originally, or what the artist concepts are what they look like originally, because now what we see yeah. is steps, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, they were absolutely smooth, smooth yeah. and yeah. at the top it was like solid gold or something, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Well, the thing is, but they uh, still don't have a structure like this mm -hmm. to this day. No, l let me tell you something funny, right? You know about the pyramids. A, a, a lot I find this fact very, very shocking, actually, right? So obviously, the pyramids was a, is is is, is a man-made uh, structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, a man-made structure, um, a very tall structure. Yeah. So they so let's say the the newest the newest pyramid so the, the three that they've got yeah, right yeah. the newest is probably i think was it 2000, 2000, BC. 2000 bc so around yeah. about four thousand yeah, years yeah, old yeah. right do you know what was the next structure built after that that was taller than the pyramid eiffel tower eiffel tower eiffel tower which was built in 17 yeah or was it, or was it 1870 something 1875 yeah, or something like right century, so you got the pyramids and then the tallest structure after the pyramid after made by man yeah. was Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It took that long. Yeah. What happened? What happened to the in between? Yeah, in between to the to the development. You know, yeah. who knows? Because I said there's a uh, five or six locations where they they got similar structure of uh, pyramids. Yeah. yeah. When you got yeah. that the mine temples and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Gobekli Tepe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's in Turkey, I think. Yeah. yeah they've got yeah. that. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. They found the supposed they found one in uh, Antarctica. Yeah, 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 Antarctica, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Antarctica is another very interesting one. That's a very interesting. Yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll say like, like, like the, uh, the world's largest desert is in Antarctica. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Antarctica is a bit unusual because you're not actually allowed to go to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. um, I think we we discussed this very briefly on on the Nanaji podcast that basically there was like uh, apparently a guy who were looking for giants. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of videos and stuff like that yeah. as well. I mean, if you're into conspiracy theories, you know. Uh, but but the guys but the guys uh, since but the guys giants. no but the guys since died really yep. yeah let me tell you something about giants right so I remember so this is going back to two thousand and one me and Fizzy went to Pakistan and we were looking for like our grandparents like my grandma's grave mm -hmm. and stuff and we went to this ancient graveyard where she's buried and there'd been um, an earthquake there so a lot of the graves had collapsed. And we went there and there was one section of the graveyard massive section which is basically cordoned off so we we went we entered that part of it and i'm not joking each grave was i'd say about a good five foot wide okay and about a good 11 to 12 foot long each grave now okay. we did that and there were loads of them do you think it's possible? Because the thing is, um, the thing is, there's a couple of theories here. Yeah. Because, because, because you know, with me, I, I, I won't say I'm, I'm, I'm a full-on skeptic, right? But I always think of the logical situation first, the but logical answer first. I yeah, yeah. Is this mass graves? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'll take it on. Is, is it a mass grave? And that many mass graves, though. Uh, so, but no, because each one of these graves had an individual uh, headstone, a tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tombstones, individual tombstones, as opposed to uh, having you know like multiple names on there it was just one person's name per each and every single one mm. honestly like about five foot wide and about 12 foot long yeah. each and every single one of these mm. Mm. so I, I i do believe and you know no, but you know it's, it's funny you say that right because i i think partially it possibly could be that there might be giants that walked among among us right mm. that might be an issue that might be one of the things but also i think there's a lot of environmental factors i think throughout the ages i think the heights have increased and decreased in accordance to oxygen levels as well, like that. yeah possibly yeah. Yeah. oxygen levels i think mm. right like for example like, like you know like for example like, you know the dinosaur area why were the dinosaurs so big why was it that the insects were so big the reason why is because there was more greenery 
Mm-hmm. Okay, the planet was new. Mm. They won't be bombarded with asteroids, mm-hmm. and there was there was <coughs> so much greenery that there was an, an absolute abundance of oxygen, mm-hmm. more oxygen, cleaner air, uh, meaning different kind of life forms and bigger life forms, mm-hmm. right? And then obviously going into the future, I'll give you an example. I went to Lahore, right, going back like a few years, quite a few years ago, and uh, went through you know the full Mughal, uh, the Shahi Kila, yeah. the fort, right, and. Bearing in mind, so you know, I'm I'm walking through the doorways of what these uh, Mughals walk through, hmm. okay, and they were wearing that big kind yeah. of uh, a, a, a turban, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Now, if you're if you're a royal, hmm. your doorways should be massive, yeah, because you should have to lean down because yeah. you're a royal, yeah. Especially back then, right? If you're a royal, your you know your ego proud, yeah. yeah. I am the shortest guy in the world. I'm five five. Hmm. I had to on some doorways. And I'm talking about the king's chambers. Yeah. I had to put my head down. Yeah. How is that possible? Get away. Listen, they took you through the peasants' quarters. No, they didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Listen, I went to the pe- servant quarters. <laughs> no, I had to crawl through them. Right? <laughs> no, but honestly, like, you know, uh, some of the doorways, like the, like going from like the bedroom to the main mm. uh, area, stuff like that, I had, to, I had to kind of put my head down. And I'm such a short guy, I'm thinking, so how short must have these guys been? Yeah. Plus their headgear as well. And they had the headgear on as well, yeah. that, that made them look even taller. <laughs> Went to bloody Oompa Loompa land, that's what I know. <laughs> there must have been like, probably a tiny, tiny little people. <laughs> and this was only going back about 600 years ago. Yeah. Like for years, six, 700 years ago, or m- m- maybe slightly a bit, you know, yeah. Max I'd say like it was about 800, 800 900 Mughal years ago. Mughal that was around was... Aurangzeb was it? Tipu Sultan I want to say. Oh, Tipu Sultan, right, okay. Is he Mughal? I, th- I think I think he has something to do with that. I, th- I think he was, and that was just as the East India Trading Company was coming in to India. Yeah, yeah. So you're looking about 200, 300 years ago, Max. Uh, well, no, Victoria, uh, Queen Victoria era, wasn't it? Victoria, wasn't it? Yeah, Victoria, yeah. <coughs> yeah, Queen Victoria, yeah. who, who called herself the Empress. Empress, yeah. Because she was the uh, emperor. Uh, she wasn't. She didn't refer to herself as a queen. queen yeah, she referred to herself as the as the empress because it made sense because she was the empress of the entire British Empire at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's another interesting one. That is, you could literally talk about that for hours and hours. Yeah. The the British Raj and the atrocities that were committed. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we had this little uh, conversation the other day as well, like. Um, like we were talking about, you know, innovation, and like we were talking about, you know, uh, futuristic and AI, and you know where basically the world is going in terms of technology and everything, right? And how fast technology has grown. Yeah, if you compare it to the last hundred years, we were saying yeah, yeah, we said like in the last hundred years, look, look, look at the difference between, like we were saying, has there been a significant difference between, let's say, for example, the seventeen hundreds mm-hmm. to the eighteen hundreds and the eighteen hundreds and the nine. There's been a huge, huge, substantial yeah, difference between the nine eighteen twenty three, yeah, to nineteen twenty three, yeah, and then nineteen twenty three to two thousand and twenty. Don't get me wrong, yeah, the industrial revolution and uh, this and all that, yeah, but nineteen twenty three to twenty twenty three, there's a big difference. Yeah. Like when was the first car made? Was it eighteen? Uh, I don't know. You you you, 18, you, you, 18, you, you something like that. You know more about this. Some, something along yeah, those yeah. like yeah. late eight uh, nineteen twenty three. Look at the cars now. Yeah. Self drive. So over, over the last over, over the last hundred years. 100 years yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, there's there's a few things that have uh, uh, that have contributed to that, and I th- and what a lot of people don't give credit to is is the space race. Mm-hmm. You've got to understand what the space race teaches us. I remember a few years ago when India failed to get their rocket to Mars, and a lot of people was laughing at them. Yeah. At least they're trying. Yeah. Exactly. Because the thing is, you know, if you've got launch capabilities, you can say to them, you know, like, for example, right now, if you want to launch uh, a satellite, you'll need to go to America hmm. and say, right, listen, we need better 5G over here. Could you please? And they'll charge or China you. or Russia. Yeah, 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 they'll charge you billions uh, to, uh, to, to put your satellite up there. Hmm. But there's certain innovations. There's been certain inventions that we've got thanks to the space race. Mm-hmm. Velcro, for example. Nappies for kids, we've got because of that. Mm-hmm. Baby formulas, yes. things like that, we've got. MRI. MRI scan, yeah. yeah. M- M- yeah. M- M- MRI was invented for specific uh, space reasons. Yeah, it was. But then obviously uh, the government worked together and, and now obviously MRI is, yeah. you know, it's, it's like yeah. a. But even uh, uh, something that we use every day, our modern day GPS, yeah. 
the, you know it uses three uh, different satellites we call that triangulation yeah you know one that shows you an <coughs> area you're in one that shows you a street and the other one that speci that specifies exactly what your door number is without you know without the, the formula of, know, of, of uh, relativity yeah what einstein uh, invented basically mm -hmm. or which, which he figured out you won't be able to use gps no you wouldn't you wouldn't yeah. know you wouldn't know where you are in space and time exactly but also like uh, isaac newton right i think it was isaac newton he came out with the concept of a telescope mm -hmm. he actually made that because he made it because he wanted to look at cells and stuff i don't know what it might be isaac newton right he wanted to basically look at cells and stuff like that but like with more detail mm -hmm. so he invented this and, he, and because he didn't have any money he then sold it to the government he goes if we put this on your ships right you can see you can see all of your enemies they're like oh wow you know we'll order like a thousand of them which then they paid him and that then mm. he used that funding to go and do more mm. science yeah. you know um so well, i think you know th the fact that throughout the victorian times there were the royal science academy in london i believe and they made a lot of innovations in uh, in in medicine and that allowed people to live longer and plus there were far because of the british empire there were far less conflicts going on the, the, this is this is something that we, we discussed yeah yeah and that's what because the thing is creativity can't happen during times of war mm. it doesn't uh you can come up with with uh necessity based products mm. but not not something <coughs> which will be truly an innovation mm. you can't do that during times of conflict or during times of poverty or times of distress so during the plague nothing like this was happening during uh, you know uh, times of war you won't have any, any any innovation either so i think where the british empire has done a lot of bad stuff i'd say a good byproduct that's come out of it a positive byproduct has been the fact that they've created a lot of peace because don't forget they were getting a lot of tax from all their colonies and all that was coming over here and because that was coming over here we had no uh conflicts within our own land over here yeah so that allowed us to concentrate on science and commerce mm -hmm. so basically what, what, so basically what you're saying is the reason why we couldn't innovate like earlier in the years so let's say let's let's go back to the 17th century or the 16th century the is, medieval times yeah the medieval times because there was that much war that many wars going on everybody were conquering each other mm -hmm. they are all really busy in surviving yeah and if you're living in uh, a time of trying to survive mm. and famine and disease right you're not able to innovate whereas mm. where, where, where is now when there's a bit more peace so let's say japan for example you know what let me give you an even better more personal example okay if you're struggling financially yeah you're struggling to put food on the table yeah but you also want to put some money aside as well for your future later on mm. what's going to be your priority yeah yeah putting food on the table yeah or putting some money aside yeah for your retirement yeah it's going to be you're going to think about the now the today okay. you're not going to think about the next five years or yeah. the next 10 years yeah and that was our problem we were too busy with our conflicts in the now yeah in the 16th 17th century yeah. once we overcame them that's the only time that we had the clarity in our mentality to start thinking about these things that's when the brilliance of sir isaac newton and uh who's the other geezer evolution charles darwin yeah and you know that's when all these brilliant minds started coming around and that's when we were able to concentrate on these creative things and then once you ignite that spark a little bit that leads to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and that's the reason that's that's the only reason why yeah you know uh, isaac newton right is a, it was, i mean because uh, i want to kind of wrap this up now yeah uh and then we're going to more conspiracy stuff the next time hopefully we'll talk mm. right but like with isaac newton what what uh this guy because people say that oh, an apple fell on his head and no 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 he basically s no <laughs> yeah. no but it's people the, say it's not like gravity didn't exist <laughs> before, no, no. before apple landed on he, he basically saw uh an apple falling mm. from a tree and he thought okay how has that happened okay and then he basically started to um, so he thought okay so there's clearly something pulling it down right mm. okay then it looks at the moon right okay why is the moon not being pulled down to earth mm. okay so in trying to figure that out okay he invented calculus yeah and then the guy turned 23 mm. 
or about 22, right? So at the age of about 22 or 23, the guy invented calculus, yeah. which is probably one of the hardest things you can learn when it comes to mathematics. They don't teach you in school. No. If you want to take up calculus, you've got to be brilliant at maths already, and then you've got to take up calculus in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so this guy was a very brilliant, brilliant guy. Obviously, the, the, the genius of all of them is probably, I would say, probably Einstein, man. That guy was just... Yeah, oh, that guy was that, you know, he, the, you know his, some of his laws and his principles, even now about black holes and... Um, mm. You know, I don't want to go into too much uh, in depth with that with black holes and uh, like you know, in general relativity, some of his rules that he came out with and everything. Yeah, it's just um Kip Thorne that was wasn't it? That was a consultant on that one. Kip Thorne was one of the producers and the consultant, yeah. yeah. Uh, who got a Nobel Peace Prize. He got a Nobel uh, Kip Thorne uh, got a Nobel Peace Prize because he predicted um two black holes colliding mm. and it's gonna create a shock wave. Okay. Because be, believe it or not, right? And this is only going back, I think, about four years ago. Mm. Four years ago, black holes was still a theory. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we knew about it, it was still a theory. Mm. But then he put that theory into practice and he goes, listen, there's going to be evidence uh, that there is actually, there actually are black holes. Mm. How are we going to know that is because the two black holes are going to be colliding. They have done that already. There's a shockwave that's coming towards Earth. So he made a machine, I think it's in Arizona, so maybe took it there, which is going to be able to track this. And it okay. did. On cue, boom, it actually, mm. um, the, the shockwave got sent, came to Earth, and it got detected, and it got a Nobel Peace Prize. This is very geeky stuff, by the way, guys. You know what I mean? So because uh, there is a black hole that's on a couple of million miles away. The, there's, there's black holes everywhere. No, no, there's one like close to us. <coughs> I think we've got a f like we've got a massive one in in our galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have. And that's yeah, what, um, and they say that every every galaxy has got like a, a super massive black hole. Yeah, uh, in 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 the middle of it. Yeah, and it's it's just always sucking all all, all matter. Because there is one that's coming closer to us hmm. uh, recently. They've seen it in. Um, can't remember. I've seen it. it was it on YouTube? I can't remember. But there is one quite close. It only reaches in the next. A couple mm. of billion light years, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've been dead by then. But uh, we're safe for now, then. Yeah, yeah, we're safe for safe for now. Yeah. My bank account's like a black hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say my pockets are like a black hole. Well, Sucks in everything good. So yeah. Uh, what time are we in? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? One away. One away. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up, but before we do that, Joe, yeah, I just want to say, just uh, chuck that here, uh, pass that over here, yeah. So basically, uh, Joe's like a massive movie fan and uh, obviously we're all movie fans. I'm not going to movies and stuff, right? But I just want to do a little uh, kind of an experiment thing, yeah? So right. an experiment. Yeah. But uh, thank you very much. So Peter, basically, right? sexy motherfucker. <laughs> what I want to do, yeah? Oh, yeah. Is um, yeah. I've got five directors and I think everybody at home, they should, they should kind of get involved in this, right? I've got five directors, got okay, that I've written down here. Now, uh, IMDB, they've put down what is the more what okay so what is the top rated movie of these directors so imdb imdb have put their top rated movie for these directors okay okay so i'm going to give you a director and i need to tell you and what, you need to tell I me you need to tell me in your mind what you think is the best movie that they've ever made and then i'll tell you what imdb have said All and right. you can tell me as well what do you think as well right so the first Director is Steven Spielberg. What do you think is the best movie that Steven Spielberg has made? In my opinion. In your opinion. And then I'll tell you what the best movie according to IMDb is. I'll, I'll tell you what I think IMDb's got on there. No, no, no. You tell me yours well, I first. think mine. Yeah. Okay, I think Steven Spielberg's best work ever. I think I'm an 80s, 90s child. I'll have to say probably one of the Indiana Jones movies. But yeah. well, that's because I've got a personal connection to which it. Which one? Which one? The second one, man. Temple of Doom. I love second one. Movie. What would you say? Favourite one. Yeah, yeah, Temple of Doom. It's got yeah. Manesh Puri in it, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kali Ma, Shakti De. But I know, I know for a fact it'll be probably someone Avatar. like... No, no Avatar. No, 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 James Cameron. Uh, yeah. I reckon it'll be someone like Shinder's List. Shinder's List, yeah. You're right. So basically, according to IMDb, Shinder's List is uh, their top rated yeah. pick yeah. Um, for Steven Spielberg. Okay, next person, right? Uh, Tarantino. So in your mind, what you what do you think is Tarantino's best movie, best work? Pulp Fiction. <coughs> Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Do you know any? Do you know Tarantino what movies he's made? So I'll tell you what he's made. He has made Pulp Fiction. Yeah. He's made, he's made, he's he's made Reservoir Dogs, Dogs. Pulp Fiction. Jackie Brown. Uh, Inglourious Bastards. Kill Bill One and Two. I think Inglourious Bastards. Yeah, your, your, your favorite yeah. Inglorious Django, yeah. Once Upon a Time in Django, Hollywood, yeah. which one do you Death think? Proof is your favorite. Yeah. I've always been for me, it's Inglorious. Yeah. For me, it's the yeah. Pulp Fiction. Pulp well, Pulp Fiction got the top, yeah. Pulp Fiction, don't forget, Pulp Fiction also won the Palme <coughs> d'Or Award, yeah, at uh, uh, the Cannes Film Festival, mm. which is a very it's more prestigious than an Oscar. 
All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But anyway, uh, Pulp Fiction got the, uh, the 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 highest on that. Yeah. I'm a crazy mother. Yeah. <laughs> then the, the, the uh, you know I haven't got my wallet on me, right? I've got the wallet. Oh, the <laughs> bad motherfucker. Yeah, bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. Yeah, bad motherfucker. Uh, the next one is Martin Scorsese. All right. So, what do you think is the best movie? You think that so Martin Scorsese the guy he's made like Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, Goodfellas. Casino, yeah. all this. Uh, Goodfellas. They're gonna be surprised at this one. Um, I reckon it's gonna be something like uh, the. Uh, the it's, 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 it's not like a, it's not like a, like a like a film noir type of thing. It's, it's not one of those like kind of movies. It's gonna be something like um, uh, the Aviator or something, isn't it? No, it's not the Aviator. Or is it a Taxi Driver? Believe it or not, you're gonna laugh at this. Go Wolf of Wall Street. Oh yeah, yeah. That so the top bad. rated movie, you know, yeah, the for yeah, Martin Scorsese. But, but, but let's face it, we know why people rated Maybe that. Yeah, we know why people rated. Hello, Margo. <laughs> no, but for, for me, I think it's Goodfellas. Margo. For me, for, for, for me, for me, it's Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Think, yeah. Well, the thing is, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's a controversial opinion. This is for me. That is the greatest gangster movie of all time. Mm. That is that for me. That's the. I I think that trumps yeah. the Godfather. Mm. Yeah, you know for what. Me. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, the Godfather is this is too like realistic kind of thing. You yeah, know, it's mean, not like, realistic. That yeah. goes into a lot. Okay, the Godfather is about what's the best way to describe it? it it's it's about one mafia family, whereas Goodfellas it's about being the mafia, being a gangster rather than being the mafia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, it's, you know what? I don't feel like I appreciate Godfather as much as a person should. Because I don't know much about the uh, the mafia, you know, like mm. uh, the ins and outs of it. I'll tell you, what, I've got a great show for you to watch if you're interested in stuff like that. Uh, there's a because sh- uh, Sopranos. No, 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 no. Well, the Sopranos is brilliant anyway, but this is specifically about the Godfather. There was because you know the Godfather. It was an abs- absolute production hell to make. Yeah, part of yeah, yeah. was because it was based on an actual gangster. They were getting death threats, and then they had to get protection. And uh, the studio didn't want Al Pacino, but Fr- Francis Ford Coppola, the director, he wanted to have him in there. There's a whole show. There's a series about that called called the uh, the Offer. If you get a chance. I've heard of it, I've heard of it. Such a good show. Yeah, I'll check it out. Such a good show. Uh, we've got two more directors, right? So Christopher Nolan, <coughs> right? So Christopher, in, in your in your mind, who, what do you think is the best work that he's done? That he's made the new movie Tenet, he's made Interstellar, he's made all the Batmans, well, uh, Begins, Batman, um, the yeah. one with the Joker in, yeah. and uh, the the last one. The Dark Knight, Dark Knight. Uh, he, made, he made Interstellar. Me, Inception. Inception he made that as well. Yeah. Inception is his best work. But for me, it's kind of tied Inception and Interstellar. You know, for me, Inception, right, is probably my top three best movies I've ever watched. Yeah. Not many people understand it, though. You put it this way, right? Yeah. Look, I, I, I claim that, you know, I'm, I'm a clever guy, whatever, yeah? But for me to properly understand the movie, I think I had to watch it about three about three times. I watched it, and the second day, I remember I'm at work, and I had to draw pictures of it so this is going on and then that's going yeah. on i watched it twice I, I watched it twice in cinemas but the second time i watched it it made so much sense i, I tell you what i watched it in 4dx also the whole seat was yeah, moving yeah, and shit. 2020 on the 10th year anniversary or oh, wicked yeah but um yeah i think interstellar because I'm, I'm a science geek yeah. right i love physics and all this yeah. stuff right and astrophysics and for me interstellar is basically for me is interstellar and an inception are joint for me I'd yeah say. Uh, interstellar came number one by the yeah. way according to the top picks for imdb for christopher oh, nolan goodness i thought they're gonna put like what Dunkirk, memento or something Dunkirk there or something i don't like Dunkirk. i don't like it I don't yeah like it. i mean don't get me wrong it was the way it was I appreciate the way it was made, the cinematography and all this stuff, right? Watch it in cinema, maybe that's why it was on to watch in cinemas. No, but the thing is, you know, that movie is is, is is like a very geeky movie for a person who's doing film studies because it was shot in like a certain camera, yeah, yeah, like yeah, something yeah. millimeter, blah blah blah. But I, I'm not bothered about that shit, mate. Yeah, I just want to watch a movie and enjoy the movie. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'm not bothered about the footprint. Oh, on, in this in yeah. this scene, we use the Dutch angle. Yeah. Uh, Listen, mate. <laughs> just show me a good movie, yeah. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bothered about. It. Yeah, whatever. Last director we've got is. Um, James Cameron better be Terminator 2. <laughs> so we've got Terminator 1, Terminator 2, we've got True Lies, <laughs> yeah. We've got a couple of other old movies that he's made. We've got Avatar 1, 2. Um, he's made the other one, the uh, Abyss movie. The Abyss, Aliens. Aliens. Ali- Aliens. He made Aliens? Yeah. Second, one. Second one. First one was made by Ridley, Ridley Scott, Scott, wasn't it? First Ridley I should have put him in the list as well. Yeah, Ridley Scott. I never, I never pulled him out. <laughs> Gladiator. <laughs> I don't know what his topic would have been, but I, I, I haven't checked it on IMDb. Yeah. But... Um, but anyway, so w- in your mind, James uh, Cameron, Terminator Two. Terminator Two. Terminator Two. What do you think? For me, I watched Terminator Two recently. Yeah. Bro, that is a my, one of my. I said top ten. Yeah, easily. Oh. It, it, that movie makes my top ten. Have you seen the, uh, the uh, how they did the CGI? Yeah. On YouTube. 
Right, no, but Barcelona is not. At that, but you know, at you know, that, time, that yeah. still holds up. Still, yeah, exactly. To this day, that still holds I, up. I'm gonna tell you guys what came number one, right? And it's not Terminator Two, but let me tell you, right? I've seen Terminator One, Terminator Two. Yeah, the, those two. Uh, you know, bro, it's such an original concept, right? To come out with that concept, and then you know, Part Two. It, even now, it's a wicked movie. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an amazing movie, man. You know, watch it again, Miles, with the time. Like the, 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 way, no, the way they do the special effects. Yeah. Like, I've seen the part when the... When it's that dream sequence, when everything gets destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they did that. Oh, yeah. wicked. Yeah. Man, yeah. And by the way, the movie was made in 92? 92, 92 it came yeah. out, yeah, 92. 92. So when you were born? No. <laughs> yeah. Right? This is what, 30, 31 years old. Yeah. And it still holds up today. Yeah. It still holds right? up. Right? Anyway, guess what came number one, according to IMDb? Oh. Terminator 1. Which was made in 19... what? 84. 84. Before I was born. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, before you were born. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you that that, that means the movie is ancient. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it, bro. Do you, you know? remember what we felt like after we came out of Avatar 2? <laughs> you know what? I watched. Listen, 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 uh, listen, I, I, I haven't seen it yet. Listen, I watched it at home, yeah? Yeah. Uh, with, with Zach the other day. Yeah. You know what? I enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed it. I'll tell you what, right? I remember we came out of it, right? So, like, me, Bob's, Aiden, and Aaron went to watch it at the IMAX. And we came out of it and we're like, and we're just very quiet, all four of us. And we're like, uh, so what do you think of that then, guys? And we're like, and I said, I thought that was shite. I didn't like it. No, I, I but then I, I, I did watch it again at home. And at that point, I thought, you know what? I think I was a bit too harsh with it. And I yeah, think, I think you were. Isn't no, that you? And, know? I, and I'll tell you the reason why. Because, you know, we watched the first one at the IMAX. Yeah. And it absolutely blew us away. Because that was the, our introduction to the 3D technology. Yeah, but you know why that was, though? Because we watched other movies in, in 3D, right? Mm. In other movies. And they were a pile of crap. Yeah. Because the experience were like, you know, it was just like... Or a few things come out. Whereas, no, but the thing is, this came out after thirteen years. I expect it to be different than the last one. I, 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 th I think, I think we, we went in with with like um, huge yeah. high hopes. Yeah, I think we should have kind of just gone in with the hope of like. Yeah, it's because the first one was amazing. That's why. Yeah, yeah. expecting it. Oh. I feel sorry for Kate Winslet. Whenever she works with James Cameron, he drowns her in water, man. No, she didn't get no. She, she didn't get drowned in uh, well, Titanic. He, he almost puts her in water. <laughs> Poor bitch. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't, she didn't drown didn't. in Titanic. If, if, if anything, she could have fucking shared that thing. She could have. It's controversial. You know what I mean? She would be under the Capri one. Exactly, exactly. Paul Ladman. Jack got it, bad man. Jack in that got movie, it. You know what I mean? But the question is, do you think Jack was her imagination? I've think come across that theory. You know, it was yeah, all. Like, like yeah. a fan uh, of, of uh, imagination. Like she's all like imagining this like dream world. And ah. a lot of uh, videos I've seen of that. You know, it's like if that's the case, that's really lazy writing, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's really lazy writing. I can't do with it when the movie ends in a dream. Yeah. Well, even even though it's such Inception, I love that movie, but. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole other thing that is. You know, uh, just before we end it, Aiden, yeah, uh, one thing I was gonna pick up. You know, I wanted to say this, and, and, and what, I didn't get to see. Well, that movie the shit now. No, no, <laughs> this, this this is complete. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with superhero movies. No, I, I can't do with them. I'm gonna watch it because Black Panther, the new one, Black Panther Forever. I've tried watching it. it twice, and I fell asleep both times. I fell asleep twice. As well. Right, I can't. It's too long. It's not even that. I think superhero movies ended with Endgame. Yeah, it that's did. It. Yeah. No, what I want to talk about this is completely even separate to the topic, mm -hmm. and I know we're going to be wrapping up right, but this is completely different. You were on about 9 11. Yeah. And let me tell you something funny that reminded me about 9 11. Nothing about 9 11 is funny, yeah? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what is funny about, about something, right? Do you remember <laughs> back in the days, yeah? You know, remember the. the is it. Is, you know, the, the newspaper Sun? Is it still out? Is it I still think it's the thing. Do you remember on the page 3 of Sun? Yeah. Back in the days, you could open the page three and there was literally a woman there with a, there was a naked lady there with, with the boobies out. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, like, so any so, kid. Uh, no, so, do it. Not, <laughs> no, so any I'm kid. Look at that. Yeah. He's showing his phone. <laughs> Ooh, no, but, no, but any kid could literally go into a, a paper shop and then literally go. There was a joke. What's the hottest part of the song? Page three. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. And you could literally. I don't understand the, 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 what the concept behind this was. So basically, any kid could go into a newspaper, right? And it's on the floor and with their foot, they go like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? because, no, because and, when and, went, no, because when you went into a news agent back in the day, and I don't know if this happens anymore. Mm -hmm. The top shelf stuff that was all like you know your Rudy magazines yeah. like your Playboy yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all that stuff right no but no but no but what, what? No, no no but that was top shelf yeah. this is just a normal tabloid normal it's tabloid yeah they're it's readily there. available no it's, because it's in your house no the reason I'm saying the reason I'm saying about um, yeah, ten years ago ten years ago yeah no when did uh, <laughs> page the what uh, is page and is page three still going on? is page three still going yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
No, but the thing is, no, the reason why I'm saying 9 11 here is because I remember on every every single tabloid, there were literally like, you know, twin towers and you can see the plane going in, right? And they're like, oh my God, such a tragic thing, you know, thousands of people have died and blah, 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 whatever, right? And then you go to the next page and it's a fucking girl, the girl there with the boobies out. <laughs> Listen, even with that as well. It's like, you know, like, what the hell, man? Listen, even if that was the case, like, you do that headline and you're like, oh, I better pick this paper up. And before going to the headline, before going to the rest of the story, you go to page three first, you'll be like, oh, let me see this first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. You know what I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's like we're gonna give you some bad news, right? Oh, we're gonna cheer you, but oh yeah, okay, okay. Oh, let's go to the next. The full story now, right? Okay, so these are the people. No, I never understood why. Yeah. Like, what was the point of it? So, 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 so open the paper, bam! You got like a naked lady there. Yeah, exactly. So that I want to talk about that, and the other thing I want to talk about, right, is every time I put my fucking fuel in, right. I put twenty pound in. Why's it got twenty or one? It pisses me off. <laughs> it pisses me off. I was doing it like it was like nineteen nineteen. I was doing nineteen nineteen. The rigged. Uh, no, you can do that thing now, can't you? Where you can press them and you can tell it that like, I want to put in like twenty quid or something. And that's which like, when, which machines do this? So, you know Tesco's on Great Orton Road. Yeah. You go there <coughs> and there's there's Pakistanis are this. No, yeah. So like you just so you can either do uh, how many liters you want to put in or you can press the pound sign if press the pound sign and press like you got five ten and twenty there yeah mm-hmm. but listen i need to call these out right now because i'm telling you wherever i go and i listen i've been putting in fuel for years okay a hundred people do that for a, pe- for a penny yeah that's a quid mm-hmm. yeah but yeah and, and, and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people go every day yeah yeah i to get go- pissed off and i end up going to like 21 pounds and then I got over that as well. Yeah. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> no, no. I put 25 in. You bastard fucking 30 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Listen. <laughs> round it up, round it up. I didn't forget. Fuck's sake. This is the reason why this, uh, this dickhead does it all the time because you've got a hand movement going on here. That's why. He's got a little twitch. That's why I got pleased to do it. Bliss to see. Yeah. Is that. <laughs> no, but no, but, but <laughs> no, no, but honestly, no, but you got to say the, the, this is the, the, they actually are thieves, right? And they are actually scamming people because. I know for a fact that I am clicking it once and it is because I've clicked it and it's gone to you know it's gone to uh, you know 1999 or 1990 or whatever year and then I know if I do it just one more click it'll go to 20 but it goes to one penny yeah. one penny over so guys it is actually a scam yeah. I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not crazy I'm not no, thinking it about pisses it me off it's, it's literally a black I've been stood there for about two minutes thinking should I click it yeah should I click it should I click it, <laughs> right. and I click it. Shit. You know something? I go to the counter and I'm like, I'm gonna have a penny because I don't want to buy it. Fuck's sake, after all that. Yeah. So she just, she just lets me off anyway. Because I got more in there and I'll go to the regular and the, they always let me off like. Sorry, Pen. I'm sure we're selling this. Look at the system. He's beat the system. He's beat the system. You know what I mean? He's yeah. coming them. He's getting no, a penny no, more. No, sometimes I give him like, yeah, uh, like two per TP. Yeah, you do that hundred times, you've got a quid more. Yeah. No, but he, he goes the, the, on the, the amount of occasions where he's given him like, to keep the change. I uh, yeah. the change. Keep the so, change the, yeah. so that's what they let me off sometimes. Yeah. yeah, but that girl isn't putting that change in her pocket. That's going to the corporation. Yeah, they want yeah. your penny, bro. Yeah. Awesome. Don't forget, they're owned by. How many people do you think they do that to? Right? Exactly, uh, thousands of people. Okay. So they, 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 there's literally thousands of people that are literally like, you know, they, they're making a penny, penny, penny off and then that's it. Like I said, if you, if you do 100 people in one day at one petrol station, yeah. how many branches have they got around the country? Yeah, exactly, man. Do you know what I mean? So I, no, I was just saying that I'm not losing my head, am I? Like, it, this is the thing. Mm. No, one, the system's been... Look at that. And there you that's, go. That's, 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 that's <coughs> bad design. Yeah, that's by design. That's not just uh, happened accidentally. That's by design. Well, they put the fuel up because um, in COVID, we're getting fuel please, so cheap. Yeah, because they could have <laughs> shifted the fuel. Bro. Yeah. They could have shifted. They, they were, just, were just in containers and, and yeah. they were kind of going off what or was whatever. Like one pound, one pence or something. It was one pound. <laughs> something like that. I think it went down to about one pound and ten p, one pound and twelve p, something no, like that. Less than that. It had one time. Was it less than yeah, that? Yeah, less than that. Bloody hell, man. We should have stopped up. Should have stopped up pretty Collins. Bloody no. But guys, we'll end it on that note anyway, yeah. So I think hopefully Joe will have a, a part two next yeah, time. Yeah, but I want to talk. I want to talk more about the whole conspiracy side because we uh, we didn't go into it as much, but I'm a bit uh, disappointed. But we're going to keep it for an hour, I just over an hour. The question I'm going to ask before you go is, uh, what do you think about Apollo eighteen? About Apollo eighteen. Well, this conversation going to this conversation. Is, Apollo eighteen. What, how long are we on, about, uh, Aiden? <laughs> that's the that's the question I want to ask before we go. Yeah, no, no, no. So that's what the next conversation. Uh, uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. We need to talk, the next one we need to talk about is going to have to be about the moon landing. Yeah. yeah. Whether you think it actually happened or didn't happen, uh, and other conspiracies like yeah. that. Area fifty one, yeah. right? Space aliens. We were talking about aliens the other night, weren't we? And 
Not yeah, the yeah, yeah. Not the, the ET kind guys. No, 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 no. I don't think they're green and they're not Paul. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's yeah. the case. Okay, well, you know what then? We've got this conversation to yet to have with uh, also uh, Tessine yeah. and with Joe as well. Yeah. In fact, you know what? I think we, sh- we should all be on the same podcast. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I think that'll be an interesting one. Uh, but yeah, guys, we'll keep it, you know, short and sweet. It's not even short and sweet, but we'll just end it yeah. on that note over there, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll be ending in this one. Bobsy Bounce, signing out.